Hey, greetings friend, Jacques Howard here. That is my name. And thank you for taking a couple of minutes of your time to listen to one of my podcasts and one of my shows. Today, I'm gonna to be chatting with Tesca Frisbee. Tesca Frisbee is a Trentonian um, and she is running for the West Ward City Council position, which is coming up in the November, November 2022 elections in New Jersey's state capital, Trent. Now, we're going to talk about that a bit, but um, besides talking about Tesca um, and her aspirations for a political position, I think it's super important for you to know a little bit more about who she is as a person, because the person who we have to lead, oftentimes their personality comes out in their leadership style. So here at uh, Bridge to Vote, Trenton 365, and my other outlets, we're working to get as much information from the people to the people. So when I have someone comes on to talk about politics or their positions or what they're looking to do, it's not that I'm giving them an endorsement, it's that I'm giving them encouragement that they are taking the steps to build a better community for everyone and for them to get the audience to share who they are. Because it's not one person or two people that are going to build this community. It's as many people as possible working together going in the same direction and following the rules and laws and regulations. And if they need to be changed, those people get together to change this. Without any further ado, I am excited to bring on Tesca Frisbee. Tesca, thank you so much for a couple of minutes of your time. Um, I know that you have so much going on. Um, besides being an awesome mother and the work that, that your husband does and, and your family, how active they are, you are doing your own thing. You've got your you're an author, you are an organizer, you are very active in the faith community, you're very active where you live, et cetera. I'd like for you to take the next, you know, this interview to kind of roll everything together for the folks who have no idea who Tesca Frisbee is, but they want to learn a little bit more and they want to find out a little bit more about some of your aspirations for what the city of Trenton can look like. So let's start with you giving yourself a bit of an introduction, elevator speech, and then let's roll into talk about some of the things that you're really passionate about. Good morning, Jock, and thank you so much for allowing me to be here in your space, in your presence. I love and appreciate you and your family, and you know that. But um, thank you, yes, again, for allowing me to be on this amazing platform with all of your listeners. I am Tesca Frisbee. I have been here in the city of Trenton, raising our two boys with my amazing husband, Commissioner Frisbee, Samuel Frisbee, for the last almost 20 years, I want to say. Um, I am a Jersey City girl, born and raised there, um, and Sam and I have been together now as a married couple. For, this will be, our, well, I believe, our 25th year this December, so I'm excited about that. <laughs> Who am I as a person? I am a God-fearing woman. Never, ever put my God on the back phone, so when you get me, you automatically get him. I, they say you can't mix religion and politics. I say you can't separate religion and politics. Who you are at the core will always come out, it will manifest itself. And at the core, I am a faith believer. I trust in God with all my heart. And I like to tell people, you know, I, some people may call him Allah, some may call him Jehovah, but some call him God. We, it is one God I, I trust and believe in. It's, we believe that there is a higher power. And as long as we are adhe adhe adhering that, we want the best and that that higher power wants the best for us, then we can all get along. We can agree to some things and disagree with other things and still be respectful. And that's what I, I honestly believe at my core. So yes, you're always going to get, um, they say, for me, we say that God is love. And then that's what's at the center. That's our core. So I try to operate with that in the forefront of what I am doing at all times. <clears throat> I am an author. I author a book in the middle of the pandemic um, by, called Different, comma, Just Like You, because it talks about our differences. And yet it is our difference that, that differences that make us all so uniquely the same. If people would stop, take a moment, take a breath and realize that what makes you different um, is what makes you unique. And if you start celebrating your differences and, I'll, I'm, I'm, and I am allowed to celebrate my differences, we're gonna have a whole lot of celebrating going on around here. And that's what I, the book is about. Like, let's celebrate, don't get angry, don't, don't get oppositional. Take it as an opportunity, as instead of a, a reason to be oppositional, let's take it as an opportunity to celebrate one another, celebrate the differences that make us so amazing as a country, as a community, you know? So that's what the book was all about. 
Now, as far as this race goes thing, this political thing, I made my husband pinky swear about, oh, 19 years ago, I was pregnant with my first son that he would never go into politics, never. And we had to have a conversation about that, maybe about almost into our fifth year of marriage because he got tapped to be in the uh, political office and the uh, public policy. I like to say, I hate the idea term po politics. Um, so I want to say uh, in the uh, serving area of our, our community. And here I am now 20 some years later and I'm being tapped on the shoulder and uh, now I'm like, okay, he's like, you know that pinky swear? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it, I get it, I get it. <laughs> so now, I'm, I don't want to say I'm eating crow, but now I'm like, yeah, okay, babe, I get it. But it's just that we want to make a positive impact. We want to bring what we have in us, what we think that we can use to benefit our community. We just want to give that. We want to serve the community with it. And I, that's where we're, we're leading from. Is It's not that I think that I'm better than anybody else, but am I qualified? I absolutely am. I just graduated last night from a course. Um, I'm ecstatic to say a 17 week course. And I didn't realize that they, um, they appreciated my talent so much that they actually gave me the opportunity to speak on behalf of my class. So I was ecstatic about that. I, I was humbled by it. I think that's the best word to say it. But it taught, the, the class was teaching you about how to be a, an effective leader in your office. So I absolutely wanted to do that. So it taught you about budgeting, how to get a good team, what does good governance look like? And those were the things that I, I believe that if you're going to into an office that it has, you have to have budgeting experience, you have to have good governance, you should absolutely take something that's going to help you with it. Even if you have been doing it for a while, maybe you've been doing it or, or around people that have been doing it. No one knows it all. If you ever get to the point where you know it all, you just lost it all. So for me, I've, I've been around um, my, my family. The majority of them are in, not majority, there's a good deal, a good portion of them that are in the uh, elected offices. And, uh, but just because they're in it doesn't mean that I'm in it. I am around them and I don't know the core of things. So I was ecstatic to get in here and get my hands in one-on-one. -on -one and find out you know, what do they need? What actually goes into all of this? Now, mind you, my background is accounting. I love numbers. I have been doing numbers for over 35 years now, <clears throat> which I guess kind of ages me, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> but for just a little more than 35, maybe 40 years now, I've been doing numbers. I love accounting. I love bookkeeping. I love doing Sudoku in the middle of the night. Um, I have to do at least three or four of them each night before I can go to sleep, just so I can get my head wrapped around fun numbers um, at times. But I, I love numbers. So budgeting is right up my alley. And I tell folks, if you're going to be in this political, in this arena, if you're going to be working in city governance, it is extremely important to know how a good budget operates or what even a budget means. What does that um, look like and how to actually go through the numbers and the line items and know what should be on there, what should not be on there. So I wanted to get a refresher on that. And that's exactly what that helped me um, to do in the course that we just finished up. Um, hey, Tessia, I, 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 want, I want to jump in because um, it, I feel as though you're looking over my shoulder. Um, you, you, <laughs> answering, do that job, watch out. <laughs> you're answering all my questions. So. <laughs> So, so now I got to pivot. I got to pivot a little bit. So um, so you just said something that came up uh, earlier this week. Um, I was talking to some folks about um, um, our system of government, um, you know, the party system, and it's not really a party system and all those different things. And uh, we were talking about um, continuing education and the importance of our elected officials and our leadership, our directors, et cetera, for everyone who's in a position of leadership or, or um, guidance, for them to continue with their education. Um, I'm not saying to be fully involved in seeking a doctorate or anything of that nature, but at least continuing education classes so that you 
that, so that they are abreast of what's coming down the pike. Some new technologies, some new ways to do things, um, forthcoming opportunities, et cetera. And um, during this conversation with a resident, they had mentioned that it seems as though that's not what our current elected officials seem to be focused on. They seem to be focused on doing things that are a bit more um, out front, um, in front of the camera, as opposed to the functionality of our government and the business side of our government. Can you just talk a little bit about um, what you know about the functionality of government and, and um, keeping the lights on basically from the governmental perspective as a uh, council person? One of the things that I did when I first considered looking into becoming a, a council person was I wanted to look up what does it mean to be a council person? I, I mean, that, that to me is like the basis. If you don't know what the basis of it is, how do you know that you wanna be it? So I went and I looked that up and folks said, that, you know, that I was being anal with that world and I'm gonna be anal the whole way through. I, I, I love the idea. I like checks and balances and I like rules. I like that if this is what I'm supposed to be doing as a council person, that means that that's what you're supposed to be doing as a council person and the other five, six other people they're also supposed to be doing as a council person. And I also wanted to look up, is there training for that? And I found out that there is. There is training that our Lieutenant Governor's Office provides for people who are coming in or even sitting council persons. But when you're, when you're first going into office, there is a training to tell you about what you are supposed to do. What is the expectation for you in that seat? And what I found out is a lot of our council or our current <clears throat> council people, they have not taken that training, which I believe leads to a lot of the confusion and the um, missteps that we are having right now. We don't know what it is that we're supposed to do and what it is that we're not supposed to do. So they're, they're doing like a trial and error, a trial by fire pretty much, but I don't choose to operate that way. I don't, if I don't have to step in and get burnt by this fire, I'm not doing it. I don't like paying. So I don't, I'm not going to sit around and volunteer for it. What I'm going to do is the soon, I told uh, the others that as soon as that opportunity for that class is made available to me, I am going to be the first one to sign up for it. I want to go to the Lieutenant Governor's office and I want to find out what it is that that class um, teaches. What is it? Um, if they, can I take it more than once? Because I don't believe that you'll get everything all at one time. So if they offer even a refresher, I wanna take that as well. <clears throat> if we all know, because even if they, the others don't, the other six um, council members don't know and I know, I'm very good at taking notes and taking copies of handouts. And I don't mind sharing what I have been given and have learned to share with others so that we all be, can become on one accord. We have to be on the same page. I think that that's why there's a lot of um, back and forth, even with the mayor. You know, we have to um, learn to work with our leadership and that's all in there. It shows you what, what it, what it, what's your role, what's the mayor's role and how do the two of those work together so that we can have a good marriage when we're doing that. And that's the, one of the issues that we're missing is how to work together effectively. And I, that to me is extremely important, working together with our leadership so that we can all get the best for our community. Now, when we talk about a community, because you know I'm a big person talking about it as well, civic engagement, the fact that residents need to be involved. Um, now that you're moving into the position of potentially an elected uh, official, um, what what would you like to say to the masses of Trentonians um, who may be apathetic about voting or about the process? or maybe disenfranchised with the way the city currently is or where they've seen it in the, in the past. How do, how do you, um, like, what would you like to say to them to encourage, especially the young people to get involved in this process? Cause this is really building the, the community for the future and they need to be engaged. First thing I would say is please, please, if you have not signed up to register to vote, please sign up and register to vote. That is so extremely important. And I'm, I like to use this example that um, if there is a penny that is on the ground and there is a dollar that is on the ground and you're walking by 
Um, and it's your penny and it's your dollar. Let's say that instead of you walking by, it's something that you drop. And you know that there's someone that's coming by who is not a very favorable per per person and that they will take um, one of the two items. Which one do you think that they're going to go after? Are they going for the penny? Or are they going for the dollar? And of course, the, the answer is they're going for the dollar because it has what? Value. Well, that's what I like to tell people about the vote. People are not going to come after something that has no value. So if folks are fighting so hard to get your vote, to get you to not vote, to get you to miss voting, to take away your voice in the voting booth, that means it has value. Don't let somebody come by and steal your voice. A lot of our um, young people and, and our, my generation as well, they like to, well, I don't say they like to, people have been telling them that their voice does not count, that their vote does not count. <clears throat> If it did not count, if it did not matter, people, others would not be working so hard to take it away from you. People only want things that have value. And if they're coming in here to get your vote and to silence your voice, that tells you that it, that should speak volumes to you, that it has value. And that's exactly it. Your vote has value. Your voice has value. Don't let them take either one away. And if you don't vote, you have just given up your voice. Don't let anybody else speak for you. Let your vote be your way of letting everybody else know. Plus, we have such a strong community and people take us for granted at times. It's what I, it's what I have felt in as far as the elected officials um, statewide um, have done. They say, ah, Trenton is a blue state. They're gonna vote this way and they're not gonna vote strong anyway. So we don't really have to invest a whole lot in them. I'd like to prove them wrong. Yes, we are a blue state. Yes, we come out and vote, but and, and they're right. We don't come out and vote strong. I want to turn that around. I want them to have to stand up and pay attention. And they don't, what we're not getting is that we're not just voting for a person, but we're voting for our economics. The, our vote means money. Your vote means that you get dollars coming into your city. Right now, one of the, my platforms is to fight for our tax dollars. The state is sitting on whole lot of prime real estate here in our city and they are taking it for granted. I want to speak up and out and get them to pay abatements or whatever it is so that we get the money back here in our city. But if they think that we're not serious and ah, they're just you know, banging a little, a, a little thimble, not even a pan. Our vote, our vote shows us locking arm in arm and that we are strong. And the more of us that lock arm in arm, that means the more of us that vote the stronger and the louder our voices will become. And we have got to do that and show people that we're not just here and you cannot just take us for granted, but we're here. You better sit up and take a seat and pay attention because we're here and we are going to vote. We will vote you in and we will also vote you out. You know, um, um, you mentioned something about us working together um, as a community and the value there. And it stuck with me because I've heard that before in the past too about Trenton being blue. Um, you know, so they don't even want to, the other parties don't even want to come here, or they just sprinkle some money, and then it just blows my mind because there's still human beings here who are not getting the basic needs of our society, and we have the ability to do it. I mean, this is one of the wealthiest counties in the country. The money's not the issue. It's, it's a matter of, of how we manage things and, and how it gets to where it needs to go. Um, I'm gonna go off into the weeds a little bit because you, you checked all the, the pre-questions that I had. You hit them all already. So thank you for that. So I'm gonna go off into the weeds a little bit here. Um, a lot of times during uh, um, election season, there's people who come out and, and they want to run for office and, um, a lot of times they're saying a lot of things that may not be even the purview or the scope of practice of, of what the council members about the position, like you had said earlier. Um, how would you advise um, just residents in general to ask questions of, of folks who are seeking um, elected official or council, people who are trying to run for council? How would you, in, like, what would you say to the audience for them to ask the other council members some questions um, just so that they could get a better understanding of who they are as candidates? That's a great question, Jock. And one of the things that I, I if, if, if I'm that resident, 
couple of things that I'd like to have them ask. I'm just saying. Um, ask them first, first of all, if they're going to go into city governance, if they want to go into my, your city council seat, what do you know about budgets? That's number one. We're going to have millions of dollars that we are going to have to deal with. If you can't handle your own home, you can't handle your own budget, how are you going to handle millions? That's question number one. Two, I would ask, how are you going to work with the current leadership or the, whoever's in the seat in leadership in the mayor office? Do you feel that you should circumvent your authority and do this, that, and the other? Or do you think that it's more important to work together when it comes to uh, council and the mayor's office? Also, I would ask them to ask a question about the incumbent and or the others that are running for office. And the reason I say that is because you want to hear their conversation. They're, at some point, who people are at the core is going to show up. And I like to tell, this is the, there's someone else who is running for the same seat as I am. And I've had a conversation with that individual. And I told them, you're never going to hear me talk negative about you during my campaign or otherwise, because that's not who I am. If I have to bring you down in order for me to get up, I need to sit down. We do not need, we already have the negative. We need to start pulling the shade up on all the beauty and the positive that Trenton has. And I don't want to be someone that they say, oh, did you hear this? Or oh, you hear the whispers. If they ever hear anything that's negative about from me, about me saying it about someone else, I want them to know at the, at the immediately, it is a lie. I am not going to talk negative about anyone. I'm going to talk about my issues. I'm going to talk about my platform. I'm going to tell you about what I bring to the table and ask you to make an educated decision from there. I want you to, I want who I am at the core to show up, not just when I'm on camera, not just when I'm on a radio station, not when I am just, I have a microphone in my hand. I want people to listen to me, or better yet, go listen to my family and see what they say. Because I believe that what your family thinks about you says a whole lot. And family will tell, tell you, ready or not, that. It, it, it look, I, I I just sometimes I listen to some folks and I had folks, I heard someone say their own mama said that they wouldn't vote for them. If your mama ain't vote for you, I got issues with that. I don't think I want to vote for you either. If your siblings don't want to vote for you, I don't know if I want to vote for you. So go listen to folks family, listen to what they have to say, but listen to folks speak when they don't know that they're not on camera. That's who you're going to find out. That's who you're, that's the real person who you're getting in office. Go find out what folks have been doing prior to coming out for election. I tell I, I, I invite you to go and look up what I've been doing. I had no, I, I've never intended, never intended. I say never, never intended to run for office. Never job, never. <laughs> I promise you. And if you'd have asked me that even a year ago, I'm like, heck no, I'm not running for office. That's not who I am. That's everybody else in my family. But eight, almost eight years now, and I've been running, working with Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense in America. Why? Not because I'm seeking a seat or what didn't start off seeking a seat, but because I wanted to enact positive change in our community. I want to be preventative. I want to make sure that my community gets whatever everybody else's community is getting. And that might have been overlooked if there was not a voice here representing my community. That's why I got involved with Moms and Man Action. I want to stop the hurt. I want to stop the bleeding. I'm a part of Clara's Heart, where we provide food for those who are down on their luck. I don't want to say just that they're um, homeless because everybody who's disabled, not disabled, who are, who are down right now, they're not necessarily homeless. Mm -hmm. they're, just, they're just not in a good position. The pandemic has done a whole lot of damage. So there are more people now that are in need than they were before. So I've been working with Clara's Heart since it began and we have been growing and the need of the community for it unfortunately has been growing. I've been working with the Trenton Blue Wave for over, I think we've been in session now for four years now and that's since its beginning. And again, in all of those I hold an office of some sort, um, be it president, co-chair or whatever it is. And with the Trenton Blue Wave, Prior to the pandemic, we were going into Donnelly Homes. We were going into the South Side. We were going into the East, the North, and the West, getting voters out to uh, vote. 
letting people in our, educating folks in our community, especially those who were um, coming out of um, prison, those who had been formerly incarcerated and letting them know, do you know that you have a right the moment you, your feet, your boots step outside of the door of the prison walls, you can register to vote. And people, were, they were blown away. We, we registered, and I promise you, with only eight people, I think it was either seven or eight of us, we went into the various areas of Trenton, and in less than two weeks, we registered over 300 new voters simply because, and I'm, well, the majority of them, at least 175 to 200 of them were formerly incarcerated individuals who didn't know that they had a right to vote once they, that their right was returned to them because everybody had let them know that, oh, no, no, you have, you have to wait years. And we were like, no, you can register today and then the next election, you will have a ballot that allows you to vote. And they weren't being told that when they were being let out. We were getting out there knocking on doors and folks were like, well, aren't you afraid to go into there? Why would I be afraid of my own people? This mm -hmm. is my community. Why would I be afraid to go into knock on the door to my, well, they are, doesn't matter. They're still my brothers. They're still my sisters. This is my community. And I'm not going to allow anybody to make me afraid to go in and knock on doors. And we went in knocking on doors and we, and at first we didn't get a great response, but once I, we were about to leave and I would turn around and say, if you know anybody who has been formerly incarcerated, if they're out today on a with an ankle um, uh, strap on, if they are, have a uh, they're on probation, it doesn't matter. If they are outside of the prison wall, they have a right to sign up and register to vote. That's when the the um, light bulbs would start going on, mm -hmm. and people would started shifting. And it was amazing because what we were finding is people were calling down the hall. People calling that such, 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 go make sure you speak to these folks that have make sure such and such and such can get them. They're like, I need like three of those. I need such and such for one, two. And, and I was like, this is amazing. So we had to end up coming back because we ran out of voter registration forms, which is an excellent problem to have. Amen. But it was sad at the same time that folks were not telling them and telling their families. So I was like, we need to do a billboard campaign. We need to do this big billboard campaign that says, if you have just walked outside of the prison wall, you can vote. Doesn't matter if you're home on an ankle strap, the, uh, um, with the ankle strap on, if you have, on, if you're on probation, none of that matters. Your right to vote is just that. It is your right. As a matter of fact, it is your responsibility hey. to vote. I'm just saying. So that was with the Clara's Heart um, one. And I can't think of NCBW, which is the National Coalition for 100 Black Women. But we go out into the community. And we are bringing up and encouraging those sisters um, who want to do better. They want to move on to different things and we want to support them. So I'm working with them. And there's another hat I can't think of right now, but those are my hats that I, sh I shift as I go. And I'm working with um, the Smith Foundation and they are doing marvelous work here in the city where they're, especially with their college care packages, where they reach out to the students and make sure that everyone who is graduating from, college, from high school that they have a love package, I like to call it. We call our college care package, but it is a, a package that is just packed with love. Everything that you could possibly need for that first week of school, as far as materials, books, um, some of them are getting laptops, um, bath towels, wash, um, washing detergent, laundry detergent, hair supply, little snacks, all of those things they give to them in a laundry basket that you can use as you're going along. <laughs> so I'm like, where were they when I graduated? <laughs> exactly. Where were they when I graduated? Some of these kids are like, oh, look, they got refrigerators. Yeah, got no, yeah. I'm like, I did not have that when I was graduating. I'm just saying, I want the kids family to go back a couple of years. Well, okay, a lot of years. And uh, I, I want mine. I, I missed it. So... <laughs> Uh, yeah, that, that's that's what I have to say to all of that. Well, well, Tess, um, I, I believe that you nailed this. Um, this was exactly what I wanted. I wanted to have um, people get a chance to see the test that I see. Hear you laugh, hear you be serious, hear you be <laughs> very serious. Show, hey, I'm, I'm a mama bear. You know, that kind of personality um, to see that. And then also um, hear you talk about your aspirations for politics, um, something that isn't what you set out to do 
but you kind of been led down this this in this direction and you believe that you're you're satisfying your soul and you're doing what what you feel god is telling you to do at this moment and as a person of faith that's all you are supposed to be doing right like just kind of right. that's it we <laughs> well done, my good and faithful servant <laughs> that's, that's it so the goal with that, I say thank you so much. Um, I can't wait to have you back on. Um, again, part of the Bridge to Vote on Facebook, that page Wolf Oski and I are doing, is providing this as an opportunity for all the candidates to just talk. Tell people what you think, what you feel, what you know, what you don't know. Be honest, be candid. And I want you to, want you to know that um, not everyone is uh, anxious to sit down and do what we just did. Now, I'm sure they have reasons why, um, but I promise them I'm not gonna do anything, no gotchas. I just want you to meet more people as a candidate so people know what they're doing. And that's part of the process. But Tesca Frisbee, who is running for the West Ward City Council seat in the forthcoming Trenton, New Jersey elections happening in November of 2022. Tesca Frisbee, thank you so much for your time. You always are a blessing. If I can say just one thing, one sure. thank you so much, Shock. I would I'd like to invite everybody this Saturday, June 4th, from 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock in Catwalder Park, we are having um, what's called hashtag wear orange. And that is um, where Moms to Man Action for Gun Sense in America and the city of Trenton, we have partnered to put our arms around those families that have been affected, impacted by gun violence. Um, there'll be several speakers. It's going to be kid friend, um, ch children friendly. I hate saying the word kid. Um, children friendly. So there'll be cotton candy. There will be snacks. Oh. There will be, um, yeah, I'm getting my cotton candy. I know I should <laughs> get, get me some cotton candy. There'll be hot dogs. There's going to be singing. There's going to be music. And there's going to be a ceremony that we're going to have to honor those that have been lives that have been taken by gun violence. So it will be a little bit of emotional, but I'm asking the community to come out and wrap their arms around these families as we show them that their loved ones, they have not been forgotten, they will not be forgotten, and that their dying has not been in vain, and that the families, those who are left behind, we understand um, that you are still mourning. We might not understand the level of your pain, but we do understand that you're still mourning and that we'll, we'll have grief counselors that will be available there at the same time. Look for the Orange Catwalder Park this Saturday, June the 4th, from 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock, come and either be blessed and or be a blessing to someone else. Thank you, Jacques. Uh, that's good. Fantastic. Thank you so much. It's a perfect way to close up. In closing, folks, uh, Jacques Reach, Jacques Podcast, Trenton 365, Bridge of the Vote. Um, all of these outlets and these entities are really together just to build a better community for everyone. So please take the opportunity to reach out to me. Um, come on the show, talk about what you're doing, suggest someone that I should speak with. If you have a topic or a subject, please do that. Send that over as well. It's Trenton, the numbers 365 in the word show, Trenton 365 show at gmail.com. And in closing, folks, Jacques Howard here. Remember, it's always about justice, peace, and humility.